Number 10. Blue Rose 13X In 2001, Blue Rose 13X was the first player ever to achieve level 99 in two different stats. She achieved level 99 magic on the 21st of October in 2001, and two months later, on December 13th of 2001, she also achieved level 99 smithing. Being the first player to level 99 magic, especially in RuneScape Classic, didn't offer much to her, and neither did being the first player to achieve level 99 smithing at first. Half of the armor that exists today in old school RuneScape didn't exist back then, including rune armor. The best armor during this time was actually adamant armor. Even the level requirements to make armor within the smithing skill were very different too. At one point in time, level 99 smithing was required just to make steel plate bodies. In this picture, you can see Blue Rose standing here in full Addy armor. Looking at her skills, you will notice some differences from RuneScape Classic's current skill tab layout. The font itself is different. Influence was a form of quest points. Prayer was divided into good prayer and evil prayer. Magic was also divided into good magic and evil magic. Tailoring was apparently a skill. Hiding from enemies was a thing as seen on the equipment status section and the report abuse button did not exist yet. Not to mention, she was only getting 15 frames per second while playing, as was normal playing the game during this time. Eventually, Jagex decided that achieving level 99 smithing should yield more of an award than it did, thus leading to the creation of Rune Armor. Except, when it was first created, it was created purple instead of blue. Blue Rose 13X being the first player to achieve level 99 smithing, and with nobody else even close to her level, gave her quite an advantage in the game after this update. She could make full rune armor sets and charge whatever price she saw fit when it came to selling them to other players since nobody else could make them. We've come a long way since then. Today, after a certain point, rune armor doesn't really matter much anymore, but once upon a time, it was worth millions to people. Number 9. Kite Neeks Kite Neeks was a Latvian RuneScape player who played the game from 2001 until early 2006. In their short time of playing, they proved that you didn't have to affect the game in a positive way in order to change it. Kite Neeks' username in Latvian means pest or saboteur, one who engages in the act of sabotage. Cheating, botting, or whatever you want to call it, it's still a big problem for RuneScape today, and back then, even in the early days, time was no exception. Kiteneeks was the creator of a program called AutoRune. AutoRune was the very first scriptable RuneScape bot, and the scripting language was very easy to learn. It was a program that redirected the RuneScape client to AutoRune itself, and it acted like a proxy, analyzing and injecting connection data to both directions. It could do everything. Auto walk, auto fight, auto mine, auto fish, auto sell, auto bank, auto trade, and even PK. Kainik stated that he didn't remember exactly when the first version came out, but according to his MIRC client logs, him and another hacker were talking about advertising Autorune's existence on this certain hacker's website on the date of September 22nd, 2002. A lot of people today believe that Autorune just duped or duplicated items back in the day, and they're right, but also wrong. On Kiteneek's website within the section of the site concerning his program Autorune, he says exactly, on November 6, 2003, a player named Six Feet Under discovered that it could be used for duping. He was trying to trade one of the holiday items with Autorune by giving server invalid parameters. Ironically, anything could be duped except holiday items and stackable items. And the best thing is, you didn't even need the item you wanted to duplicate, so it was more like item creating. He continues on to say that after having his whole Autorune community banned for the fourth time on January 2nd of 2004, he no longer even tried to continue fixing the program. After selling Autorune to somebody else, eventually the buyer's computer got keylogged and the Autorune source code was stolen. Whoever stole it eventually fixed it and sold it again to somebody else under a different name called Ashy Rune. Jagex eventually killed Ashy Rune and after trying to fix the program once more, the undisclosed buyer eventually gave up on the program altogether. Kiteneeks said that by this time, Jagex wanted Autorune to die and honestly, so did he. With RuneScape Classic coming to an end, so was the Auto Rune community, and it was never coming back. During the program's popularity peak in the year 2003, however, thousands of players were using Auto Rune. Thousands of party hats were created, and the other items that were duplicated were worth billions in GP. Not all accounts were banned, though. Some Auto Runers made quite a fortune. It took Jagex hours to discover and fix the bug. The main item dupers were banned, but the items were not deleted, and the game was not rolled back. 
Kitenix along with Autorune were never heard of again after the year 2006, but his program that he created will always have an effect on RuneScape until RuneScape dies. He is the reason why tradable holiday items are the prices that they are now in RuneScape 3, and a lot of them are still being real-world traded for thousands of dollars in real life still today, and as long as RuneScape exists, they always will be. Number 8. So Wrecked on the 20th of November in the year 2012, Jagex released the evolution of combat to RuneScape 3. While their intentions were genuine, it is a fact that loads of players quit the game due to this update. Three months later, on February 14th, 2013, a very special petition was victorious in its mission of getting Jagex's attention when it came to bringing back the old school RuneScape servers. That petition was created by a YouTuber named So Wrecked. In total, the petition closed victoriously with 44,887 signatures, and the very next day on the 15th, Jagex created a news post titled Old School RuneScape, You Vote. In just three days later, on the 18th of February during this year, Jagex had already received 160,000 votes on their poll that they created that officially began letting the community decide whether or not they wanted to bring OSRS back due to Sorex petition first gaining their attention. The minimum amount of votes they needed were only 50,000. Four days later, hearing loud and clear what the community was asking for, Jagex immediately released the early access old school RuneScape servers to the public. Jagex's voting poll ended with 449,351 votes. The number of votes decided what type of features old school RuneScape would have. Those features included the decision to even launch the 2007 servers, the level of ongoing development of the game version, the costs of services, the level of maintenance the game would receive, anti-bot and anti-gold farming updates, and regular membership polls to decide new content. Personally, I'm convinced that if it were not for Sorex's idea to start a petition for this cause, none of us would be playing old school RuneScape today. Within the description of the petition, Sorex stated, The evolution of combat update has had negative implications on the player base of RuneScape. Mark Gearhart, CEO of Jagex, has publicly acknowledged that the update was rushed and did not have adequate feedback to have been implemented so soon. Regardless, now that we have experienced a number of months with the update, it is safe to say that discontent for it has well surpassed the 50% mark. Many players have started to quit and the disgruntled masses are continuing to do so every day. We, the players, are petitioning Jagex to restore a few old game servers to the game. By doing so, RuneScape will see a return of a community that was once thriving. We are not asking for the full removal of the evolution of combat, but what we are asking for is to be given the choice to play either of the two versions of the game. Support for this idea is unprecedented. It is evident in the fact that so many people have taken to private servers in a desperate attempt to relive the old game experience. 2006 Scape on its own had almost 500,000 people registered to play before it was taken down. This number far exceeds the current player base of RuneScape itself. Thousands of players who have disembarked from the game since the EOC update would be willing to rejoin and pay premium membership fees in order to play on an old game server. This would have no negative ramifications. The people who enjoy playing EOC could continue to do so, while the tens of thousands who felt that this game-changing update was forced upon them would be given the option to play the game they knew and loved. Number 7. QWERTY SUMO Once upon a time, the runecrafting, slayer, farming, and construction and hunter skill did not exist yet within RuneScape. RuneCrafting was actually released on the 29th of March in 2004. Slayer was released 10 months later in January of 2005, and farming was released in the same year on July 11th. Construction was released in early 2006, and so was the hunter skill later during this year. RuneScape didn't see another skill release until two years later in 2008 when the summoning skill released. Skills were being released back in these times yearly or maybe even two years apart, so players would often speculate on what new skills would be coming out. Sometime during this year, this player named Cordy Sumo made a RuneScape video that got a lot of attention because he used a high score screenshot within the video that he himself faked, depicting that the next skill in RuneScape after summoning would be sailing. During this year, RuneScape had received the HD graphics update, and along with this update, the game's website also received a brand new layout with a new banner. 
The banner showed a warrior watching Elvarg destroy an island, presumably the island of Crandor, and it looked as if this warrior was standing on the inside of a boat. His cape he was wearing looked to be that of a skill cape's design, and the very faint logo on the back to a lot of people looked like an icon that would be used for the sailing skill. After the fake high score pictures was leaked and after Jagex's website received a new upgrade, another player was messing around with the old RuneScape cache files and actually discovered this model of a skill cape that had not been released. A lot of players assumed that this would be the new sailing skill cape coming out, but it was later confirmed to be the music cape for unlocking all songs within the game. Someone even went as far as setting up a wiki page displaying a sailing skill guide as if it were a legitimate skill. Sometime later after this, Mark Gearhart, then CEO of Jagex, even said to a player in a private message that the only way that the sailing skill would ever exist is if he were to get sacked or fired from Jagex first. Other Jmods tried to clear up the false rumors too, but for some reason players just wouldn't believe them, and they tried to find any evidence they could to prove that sailing would be the next skill. This went on for a little over four years. Mod Mark even had to confirm that the screenshot where he sent that one player a private message about sailing was in fact a joke. Mod Mark always denied sailing's existence, but he did say that the idea of a sailing skill gave Jagex a lot of inspiration for future updates, one of them being the player-owned ports minigame in RuneScape 3 that was released in 2012. A few other pieces of evidence that seemingly alluded to a sailing skill was an item called Book of Sailing that can be found on a bookshelf during the Taurus Trap quest. The icon for the sailing skill that was used in that fake high score screenshot can actually be found within this book. At one point in time, you could even use Quick Chat to say that you wanted to buy bronze cannonballs, an item that obviously doesn't exist within RuneScape, so players believed it had to have been connected to a new sailing skill in which you would fire certain cannonballs off of your ship depending on your sailing level. Another thing that players associated with the skill assumption was the fact that you could buy your own ship and sell it with the Dragon Slayer quest. At one point in time, sailing even appeared to be a possible preset to save in the Gears tab in RuneScape 3. Sailing never came out when everyone thought it would. Instead, in 2010, Dungeoneering was released instead. Since then, Jagex has used sailing in quite a lot of their April Fool's jokes within both game versions, all because of a rumor that QWERTY SUMO made popular back in the day. Number 6. Jack Mob. Jack Mob is one of the creators for the popular website known as RS Buddy. RS Buddy offers a downloadable client that players can use to play old school RuneScape on, and it's called OS Buddy. Essentially, it is a RuneScape toolkit. It has toggleable features within the program that can help players be more efficient at the game. Some of those features include a bank evaluator, screen markers, skilling helpers, combat trackers, clue scroll solvers, and many, many more. Jagex has even confirmed that it is okay to use to play the game, even though it is still considered to be third-party software. Today, more than half of Old School RuneScape's player base uses OS Buddy, but it wasn't that long ago that RS Buddy's website offered a very different kind of third-party software. Jack Mob's website used to offer a client that you could run scriptable bots on. Back then, the client was known as RS Buddy instead of OS Buddy. Any skill, you name it, could be botted. There were a selection of free scripts to use, but the more undetectable scripts that were known as VIP scripts or premium scripts had to be paid for. Sometime in 2011, RS Buddy turned over a new leaf when Jack Mob decided to attend RuneFest this year and ended up having a conversation with the then CEO of Jagex, Mark Gearhart, which ended in Mark actually recruiting Jack Mob as a game engine developer and advisor to the executive team. From 2012 until 2014, Jack Mob worked closely with executives at Jagex and left the company soon after Mod MMG's departure as CEO in 2014. While working full time employment at Jagex alongside attending the University of Cambridge, Jack Mob was best known for his work on the Botwatch system between these years. During his time overseeing Botwatch, waves of bots were consistently banned from the game, making sustained bot use infeasible. The old school team of Jagex moderators have even mentioned that Jack Mob was an important part of old school RuneScape's development, producing the internal map editor and other tools as well as some significant game engine updates that were required for God Wars and other content. Jack Mob also made the engine changes necessary for a resizable mode in old school RuneScape before his departure from the company. 
Today, Jack Mob is still chief executive at the software company that runs RS Buddy and still collaborates with the RuneScape team, and he is still working closely with Mod MMG and others who have left Jagex to work on new projects. Due to Jack Mob's amount of skills and knowledge within the botting community that he once associated himself with, he was able to change the game quite a bit when he decided to fight back against the bots that he essentially helped develop and distribute. Today, even though he is no longer a Jagex moderator, his bot watch system still has a major impact on the game's macroing community. Botting is very much against the rules of RuneScape, and because of Jack Mob, if you even try to do it nowadays, you'll most likely be banned on the same day that you try to start. Number 5. I Mahatma I if you've been playing RuneScape since 2004, you'll likely recognize this player's name and know very well what his craft was. This famous Canadian player killer started playing RuneScape in 2001. His PKing days dates all the way back to RuneScape Classic, but he says when RuneScape 2 came out, he embraced it right away, adapting and raising the magic skill immediately. Back in these times, there was actually a glitch you could use to gain millions of experience points in magic within an hour. The charge spell could be casted as many times as you saw fit. It was quite expensive to use this glitch method of training, but if you were going to be a pure and PK a lot, it was worth it. It was very much against the rules to abuse, but Mahatma was somehow never banned. Mahatma had a lot of success in free-to-play PKing, met some close friends, and eventually decided to create one of the most popular PKing clans in RuneScape history known as Mayhem Makers. Eventually, he bought membership and trained to 43 Prayer. Back then, the Protect from Melee Prayer was the best in the game. He raised his range skill, trained strength up to level 99, started making videos, and the rest is history. I Mahatma I was actually one of the very first players to ever really enhance the pure scene in RuneScape with his PK videos. His YouTube channel name is RS Mahatma, but he no longer uploads RuneScape videos anymore. However, a lot of his old PKing videos have been re-uploaded by other people. RuneScape, back when Mahatma's PKing career was in its prime, was a very different game. The years were 2004 and 2005. The Slayer skill wasn't released until 2005, which means Abyssal Whips weren't either. Mahatma was one of the few players who even had an Abyssal Whip when he was PKing. Today, the Whip special attack drains your opponent's run energy, but when it was released in 2005, the special attack had a 50-50 chance of hitting your max hit, making it extremely overpowered. Mahatma primarily used Monk Robes, a Water Staff for Ice Barrage, a Dragon Dagger Super Poison, an Abyssal Whip, and a lot of trash talk, actually. These times were simpler. Most people who played back in these days were just kids who had no idea what they were even doing in the game, so if you came across a skilled high-level player that was also a PKer, you basically worshipped them. The game's mechanics have now been changed quite a bit since these times, and I'm not sure how I Mahatma I would stack up against today's current PKers, but the noob inside of me wants to believe that he would still own everyone. Number 4. Wooks Previously known as Wook16, this Swedish RuneScape player is considered to be, by the entire community, as well as Jagex staff, the best PVM player in all of RuneScape. He may even be the best there ever was. Wook has recorded solo kills of almost every high-level boss monster that exists within RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape, but he hadn't revealed his face to anyone until RuneFest in 2016. Wooks' achievements could be a video all on their own, and there's far too many to actually list in the video, but a few of them are being the first player ever to successfully kill the Corporal Beast with video proof. And he also has a number of videos displaying what is called handicapped boss kills. What I mean by that is that Wooks has also killed the Corporal Beast without food, soul split, or a divine spirit shield. He has killed the King Black Dragon in 5 seconds. He has also killed 3.5 Corporal Beasts in a row without food and without banking. He killed Jad in literally 7 seconds, killed him again while AFKing, and killed him once more with no items and one prayer point. In RuneScape 3 in 2013, he was also the first player ever to solo the Calphite King with video proof once again. As of right now, Wook still plays RuneScape, mostly on the old school RuneScape servers, and sometimes he even streams while he's playing too. 
For those of you who no longer play the game but still watch my videos, Jagex recently came out with a second Fire Cape minigame on June 1st, 2017 called The Inferno. If you can beat all 69 waves, some of which multiple Jads attack you at once and kill the level 1400 boss at the end, you'll receive an Inferno Cape, the best in-slot cape in the game. Wooks was the first player ever to receive the Infernal Cape just two days after the minigame was released. Because of this, Wooks was awarded a real-life version of the Infernal Cape, a RuneFest 2017 ticket with full expenses paid travel and lifetime membership. Wooks' incredible bossing skills have definitely had an effect on the game. Over time, Wooks has pointed out flaws in a lot of boss monsters after their releases, prompting Jagex to rework the bosses to be sometimes even harder than they originally were. In short, a lot of bosses in RuneScape 3 and Old School RuneScape have definitely been designed, reworked, and released with Wooks' complex skill set in mind. Number 3. Zezima Known outside of the game as Peter Zezima, this man is the most famous player in all of RuneScape. Jagex themselves have even deemed this so. Recently, within a RuneScape mini-documentary that Jagex released celebrating RuneScape's 15 years of existence, Zezma's voice and part of his face was shown for the very first time. He said within the video that he began playing RuneScape in 2001 and has had continuous membership since 2003, the year membership was actually released. He continued on to say that he was playing a Final Fantasy card game online one day when one of his friends had messaged him about a game that they thought that he would never be any good at, and that game was RuneScape. His reign as the number one player overall in the RuneScape High scores expanded from 2003 when RuneScape 2 began and ended in the year 2008 when the summoning skill was released. Zezma had very publicly vanished off of the high scores during this year and stated on his personal YouTube channel that he had stopped playing the game competitively because the game had been becoming progressively easier over time. His lists of achievements could be a video all on their own, but some of the more notable ones was his first level 99 in a skill, which was smithing, in July of 2002 on RuneScape Classic, followed by 99 cooking, 99 magic, 99 fire making, 99 mining, 99 agility, and what would be his last level 99 skill on RuneScape Classic ever, 99 fishing on November 30th, 2003, four months before RuneScape 2 was released. In 2003, having gained around 88 million total experience points, with around 1,500 total level, he was gaining traction on the high scores and was getting very close to the Old Knight's rank 1 spot. He finally achieved rank 1 during this year, but temporarily lost it when RuneScape 2 was released due to the runecrafting skill coming out along with RuneScape 2. Zezma eventually achieved his 20th level 99 on July 5th, 2005, which was Slayer, and he was actually the first player ever to receive level 99 Slayer during this year because the skill had just been released 5 months earlier on January 26th of 2005. Once he achieved this level 99 in Slayer, he had a maximum total level of 2079 and was the first player to achieve this total skill level. He was also the first player ever to achieve 1,980 total level before the Slayer skill's existence too. On the 19th of March in 2006, he became ranked top 100 in all skills, but has since then obviously lost that position. In June of 2007, he officially became the very first player ever to achieve 1 billion experience points overall. After the release of Summoning in 2008, he began to lag behind other players in the high scores, this being the year that he decided to stop playing competitively altogether. Even though Zezma no longer plays competitively, he still does play, but mostly sticks to RuneScape 3, as he stated on his YouTube channel that he didn't want to start his account over after having worked so hard on it. Eventually, Zezma did max out everything on the high scores in RuneScape 3, and in 2016 he achieved 200 million experience points in every single skill. As for 2017, Zezma sometimes streams old school RuneScape on Twitch, but enjoys playing casually. Zezma was even quoted in the back of a novel made by Jagex called Betrayal at Falador. His quote in the back reads, It's the best thing ever that doesn't give XP. In 2007, he was actually put onto a list of biggest role models in a study done by Cartoon Network's New Generations. He also became a player moderator in the year 2009, and during 2013, he won a Golden Gnome for a category simply called Lifetime Achievement. 
So how did Zezma change this game? Well, he didn't change the mechanics of the game. He didn't change the content of the game. He changed a part of the game that keeps the game alive the most still to this day, which is the community that RuneScape once had when RuneScape was still in its prime years of success from 2004 until 2008. Zezima was the king of the community during these years. Zezma was in his 20s during this time period when most players that still play today were just children back then. Nobody really knew how to play the game during these years. Seeing somebody who had attained and kept rank 1 overall for numerous years during this time period was special. A lot of players wanted to be like Zezma back in these times because he was simply just good at the game and a lot better than everyone else back then. He figured this game out before anyone else ever did, and I'm sure he was or is still a big inspiration for any player today who holds a high rank on the high scores overall or in any skill. Zezma truly was the first original professional runescaper. Number 2. You. This may not occur to you, but you have changed this game. You probably play RuneScape today a lot differently than you once did. You probably still play today in general because you once played when you were a kid. 99% of the time, this will be the case in most RuneScape players' situations. If you're playing this game right now, it's because you've played it for years. It is because of you, the community, that this game is what it is now on social media websites like Twitch and YouTube. People now create Instagram and Twitter accounts associated with their RuneScape accounts, something unheard of back in the day. Nobody no longer needs help going from Varrock back to Lumbridge. Nobody no longer falls for the Dark Wizard lure outside of Varrock City. Nobody no longer dresses up and stands in this stupid spot for whatever reason they once did. Today, this game isn't really a game anymore to some people. Some players have literally broken this game down into a very complex science to where no XP or time in general is ever wasted while they play. Nobody makes RuneScape music videos anymore on YouTube. Instead, only the elite players are recognized within the RuneScape community social media pages. All of this is because we, as a community, have changed ourselves. We have all collectively grown up together playing this game. We've gotten better, thus we play it differently now. This game without the players is just one big map with a bunch of NPCs spread out around it with lore to connect them all. Without us, the game is dead. The economy of the game is what makes the game what it is. This is why the Grand Exchange was even put into RuneScape, because the economy over time started changing. At one point in time, maxed melee gear looked like this for everyone. Now the options are endless. It is because of you, the player, and how you have continuously never stopped playing that has made this game what it is today, along with your fellow faithful community. The day we all leave is the day that this game dies. The day we all leave is the day that Gilinor becomes nothing more than a medieval fantasy simulation. The day we all leave is the day that this game stops receiving updates and ceases from continually changing forever. Number 1. Jagex Moderators A lot of you may say, duh, they changed the game, they're Jagex Moderators, they designed the game, but they're not players. Yes, they are. Mod Mad K is the owner of a rank 2 clan known as Maxed. Mod Archie enjoys the PKing aspect of the game as well as flipping items on the Grand Exchange on his personal account. Mod Ash was quite a keen forum moderator and player before meeting Andrew Gower in a bar which later led to him joining Jagex. Mod Ronin enjoys selling 13 trouts over and over at the Grand Exchange, making up to 1.7 mil GP an hour, somehow. Before and after they became Jagex moderators, they are still players of the game. They play this game too, but put themselves second to us. They change this game based on our desires, even though they themselves, as personal players, may not even like the updates that they have to release. They cater to us selflessly, and I believe that we owe them recognition because of it. This is why I believe Jagex moderators to be the number one players who have and will always continue to change this game as long as people are playing it alongside them.